Um, I, I think I'm one of those people who always was going to do something in art because I just I learned. I, my earliest memory of discovering this was when I was in sixth grade and people wanted me in my classes that I was in in sixth grade, they wanted me to do drawings for them. And I remember that my parents um, got a little notice from the teacher that I was spending too much time helping other students with their drawings versus doing my own work. I am Robert Bupp and this is Artists in Their Space. I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Billy Joel did a song on about Allentown. So I used to draw sports characters from the magazines that we would get, you know, and I would just copy the, you know, the Michael Jordan photograph and I kind of learned to draw that way. When I got to college, one of the best things that I discovered about the college I went to was that it was the, in the epicenter of a college rock movement in the 1980s. And I was, it, it just became, it was, I didn't even realize that it was there. So I suddenly began to realize these connections between uh, visual art and music and also film because the one of the painting professors was a well-known filmmaker who filmed some of the local bands that were that were well known as well so I started when I was an undergrad the first time I really de developed a direction was when I was painting from old film noir film stills so I'd make these find a really cool freeze frame on Hitchcock film or a, or a um, cabinet of German Expressionist film or something like that and I would uh, make these large-scale limited palette paintings of you know with super expressionist uh, movements in them and things like that and I discovered I had this time to go to the library and they had this these collections on microfiche of all these historic films and I would just watch those you know and I read a couple books about it and I sort of learned there was a time when I thought I might make films but I never I did dabble in Super 8 but I didn't really make anything that was good you know um, the paintings weren't very good either really and I didn't really had never really been to a museum and um, even though I grew up in a city it wasn't a city that had a really strong museum culture and and I didn't really know other than making paintings what the what the possible op opportunities were for that so I you know, was going to be the graphic design person who had the drawing skill and, and that was going to be my career. And I kind of quickly found out that I could draw in this super tight, almost pictorial way that the graphic design people wanted, but I had to really force myself to be as neat as they liked. And ultimately, I didn't get into the graphic design program because I was a slob. So um, I was like, okay, I must be a painter. You know, and that, that's kind of where it led for there. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this. And my parents didn't say no. They didn't, you know, I'm sure they were worried, but they didn't stop me. You know, they didn't say, hey, no, no, you got to go be a business major now. Or, you know, I hear about that a lot from students that their parents will tell them like, well, if we're paying for your degree, you can't be blah, blah, blah major. And I was very lucky that my parents were willing to do it and let me facilitate me doing it, even though I was in a major that I'm sure they wondered what I was ever going to turn into. Well, everybody has a style, whether they recognize it or not, and they're part of a style. And um, I, can't, I, don't, I not, haven't really thought very much about how to describe my own that way. I think of myself very much as an interdisciplinary artist. I, I think of myself as a process artist, which means like I'm starting with a particular process. I don't generally make work and then figure out what to do with it. I come up with an idea of how to do a project, and then I execute the project and make the work to fit the project. I never really wanted to be the conceptual artist who doesn't make the objects, right? So I'm trying to have it both ways in that sense. That's great. It's funny because I, I, I mostly sketch out like the space of where the work is going to go and I start sketching out hypothetical works that would go in the space and then I uh, typically will I, I oftentimes do make digital images of things. What I, what I do very often is I go to places and because my work is about investigating these ways that people build and negotiate their spaces and documenting these untold narratives of you know, power and space uh, in cities and other environments and the way authority plays out in relationship to that. Because I do that, I do a lot of going to places and walking there and uh, sort of um, taking notes and drawing and taking photographs and meeting people and talking to people and sometimes documenting that there. Stories of situations from people that are not typically well known. And then of course I map those things and show where they, 
where they are and where they aren't as a way of pulling up information that's kind of uh, off the radar. When I was in Los Angeles doing street vendors, a lot of people were like, oh, you want to film me? I'm selling my rap CDs and out on the street and you want to film me doing this? And some people might run away from that and go, I don't want to be on camera doing something that isn't technically legal. And there's other people that would be like in Los Angeles, they'd be like, what TV station are you working for? Film me? Sure, yes, yeah, so you can put it on Instagram. You know, I mean, it was like, oh yeah, I want to be on camera. But they knew, they, I mean, I, I told them, of course, right off the bat there too, that I wasn't gonna put this in a place where they were gonna blow up. You know, that, that wasn't who I was or what I was gonna do. I, w I'd be, I was in graduate school, I was very interested in the way that, the, the way the politics play, play out in the way we use places and spaces and who can do what in this place and who can't do what in this place and what's maybe not legal but is tolerated in this place but not tolerated in another place. And some of that was born in the fact that I was walking to graduate school through a big city and I saw all these different socioeconomic situations in these different neighborhoods and there was a lot of economic boom happening and a lot of teardown and construction and it's like this place is really intriguing because it's like 27 different worlds on a one and a half mile walk, right? So the mapping part of it came out of that and the, the fact that they were on metal to begin with, it just was sort of logical to turn those into maps. So when I did that, they became even more literal and even less like a hypothetical world and more like an actual world because they were mapping actual things. So there was a video that I shot in, in uh, Mexico and there's a protest happening and I'm, you know, sort of happened all of a sudden. And I'm in the, the, in the, in Latin American cities, the plaza. So the plaza in a Latin American city is a, is a, is an area in the middle of the town that the whole town is sort of built around. And typically those are a locus of, of um, access for everybody in the, in the city to do a whole variety of different things. And it's also very symbolic of being, of being a place where there's like the center of power for the government. So interestingly, in some Latin American cities, including the ones in Mexico where I was in, they have basically made it so that certain people cannot do what they do in that particular space, even though they can do it three blocks away. And I'm really interested in any place where street vendors are kind of this sort of center of contested relationships with how we use public space. Because street vending is a common, common job living in places that are not the United States. Um, it is, in Mexico, it's, a, it's an indigenous tradition that goes back well before the Spanish arriving. So when these, they adopt these policies in these countries that come from us, they are impinging on people's livelihoods that have existed for generations. I'm probably afraid as an artist that people won't get anything out of the stuff that I do because they're, um, I put a lot, of, a lot of sort of thought into the process and I try to, uh, but I do work in these different media and I do work in different places and I wonder sometimes if those connections between them are obvious and I really you know, hope that they are. Um, not, not obvious, but there. Well, in the sense of it being, you know, like a, thinking of this project, Las Calles Públicas, as a, as a project that started in 2015, I don't know when it would end. I mean, I, that to me is never finished. I mean, I, I may decide I'm tired of it and I move on to another project or I've done work on it and it's, it's something else gets me excited and I'll move on to something else from there. But no, I don't know. I mean, you, we do have, we have works that we decide are done enough that they don't challenge us enough to go back to and it's kind of like okay this is done enough in my head that I don't feel it's it's gonna stimulate me intellectually and to be able to to go back to that so I'm gonna move on to something else and I guess I would say that's kind of how it is like it continues that way because you uh, you just decide that you want to move into something that's a little bit more interesting because you haven't done it as much